Next phase of the design is to take our roof for the entryway and we want to curve it. And so you can see the result of it here. And if you look at the actual photo, you can see the roof. It's actually got a compound curve in it, so the upper portion is smooth and then you can see it comes into an S and comes in above the columns there. So let's explore the options that we have. The program has been building the roof automatically for us, but you can select on any of these roof panels and they are editable. If I click on that, much like that CAD box we drew for the stone on that detail, you can actually modify this in lots of different ways. So the first thing we can do on this roof plane for the entryway, if we select both of those, and I double click to open them, I can curve that roof and then I can set the angle. So if I set the ridge to be zero, that's going to force the automatic roof off when we do that. Select OK and it will curve that front entry roof. Now I still have to join it and I have a join tool to the back roof but you can see that it curved that roof like we may have wanted but if you go back to the original photo we want that compound curve in here so that it's nice and smooth. So I'm going to undo that operation and pull the roof back to the way it was originally. Let me split my screen and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the pitch of our gable. So the walls, remember the walls can control roof information. Select both of those walls. I'm going to change the roof pitch from the default 8 and 12 that the rest of the house is. And I'm going to set it to be 3.5 for that pitch. Select OK. And now you can see the result of it. It's actually a pretty handy tool to just to show your clients if you wanted to change the pitch from 6 and 12 to 8 and 12 and also get your material costs for that. Now when we change that to three and a half, if I zoom in, you'll notice that this roof plane is close to the wall. In fact, it may be too close because I may not be able to get a rain gutter or drainage in there. So I'm going to select that roof plane and I'm just going to pull it out and pull it into that wall so that it touches it. Again, it will turn off the automatic roof since we did the undo previously and it turned it back on. Now that that roof is touching the wall, to create a compound curve I actually need two roof planes. So when I select the roof, I'm going to use the copy and place tool. So there's a copy and place tool, lower left hand section of your menu. And when I click that button, you're not going to see anything happen for the most part because it created that roof plane in place. Now that both roof planes are occupying the same position, I'm just going to pull that one of the roof planes back, select the other roof plane and pull it so that it meets the other one. And we'll just snap that back into place. So now I've accomplished the exact same roof with two roof panels instead of one. On the upper roof panel, if I open that up, I'm going to change it to be a curved roof and at the ridge we'll set it to be zero. And I like to do this uh, faceting. That's how many segments are in the roof. I like to smooth that out a little bit so I'm going to change it to three degrees. So every three degrees there will be an angle point. Select OK and that's going to curve that upper section of the roof. Let's do the same thing on the lower section of the roof. We'll open that up. Curved roof. And instead of at the ridge, I'm going to use at the eave, and I'll go ahead and set that to one or so degrees, and set the facet angle so it's smooth at three. And now that's going to create our compound curve in there. And you'll notice that uh, now our column is starting to poke through the roof, so I'm just going to simply select that and remove it. So you can see the way that that's coming in. Now we need to do a little bit of cleanup here. When I curved the two roof panels, it created a gap back in here. Much like when we curved it originally and we had a big gap. I'm going to select the major roof panel and I'm just going to pull it back so we can get a view of what's going on here. So I'm going to pull this section back 
and now I actually have two sections and I have two sections of the curved roof as well. So when I use the join tool I actually need separate sections to join it. So I pulled that back so that there's no overlap. So with the one section highlighted, I click on it, you can see the bigger square on it now that I've clicked on it. And there's a join tool down here in the lower section of the toolbar. It's called join roof planes. Click that once, click the roof plane that you want to join on and that will then create the geometry necessary to join that. Now the next section, again, click on it, you get a bigger square handle, join tool, and join that roof plane. And that will create the geometry to make that nice and smooth. So we just need to repeat that process on the other side. Let's pull this roof panel back a little bit. And I'm going to select the major gable that's straight. I'm just going to press the delete key, remove it. And then I'm going to grab the two curve panels that we've already generated. Use the copy tool, reflect around the front door, and place those onto the other side. And now let's use the join tool. In this case, we can go from this direction using the join. Click on the panel that we want. And then we'll select the next line. Okay, it's important to get the right panel because I wouldn't want to select this one because that's the curve already. Select this one using the join, click on the panel that I want, and that'll create a nice smooth intersection now. Let's remove our column and let's create our elevation view. So I'm going to use the elevation, shoot and elevation. I'm going to browse into the library now and I'm going to find the new panels that we want to place, the columns in there. And again, I've already skipped ahead and created the style of column that I want. In my Albertson folder, you'll see a dual column and this is a combination of a tapered panel and some polyline solids. So to place that, I'm going to go into my floor plan view, grab that and place it. Turn on that layer. You can see it show up in a 3D view. I'm just going to position it by holding my control key down and shift on the mouse and position it exactly in the elevation camera. Let's go ahead and close the library and maximize our elevation view. And We'll zoom in, select that, and I'm just going to pull it over to approximately where I want it. I'm going to unblock it so I can symmetrically copy it. So I'm going to unblock it. While it's still selected, use the copy and reflect around the front door. And now that has positioned both of our columns. With the entry curved, the next step is to add the decorative dormer above that entryway. And I've Got the photo up here and again if I go to my rendering I've got that up as well. You can see how we've done that and let's go into the program and make that happen. So in my elevation view I'm just going to grab my automatic floating dormer out of the menu. Click and place it approximately where I want it and that's going to place the default dormer for me. And before I make modifications what I might do is just select it Make sure that it's perfectly centered on the front door. Get a visual on that, and now I know it's exactly centered on the front door. Let's scroll down here a little bit. I want to make this a shed dormer, so I'm just going to highlight it. Double click on it, and the first thing that we'll do is we'll change that to a shed dormer. I'm also going to lower the pitch to 2 and 12 on the walls. You can choose your wall types. We've been using the shingle siding, so I'm going to use that. Height of the walls, 42, and then the width of it, 14 feet. I think that's all I needed to do. Select OK. And once we have that positioned, um, you can see my window is, is gigantic. It's filling the space. 
So what I'm going to do is let's tab into that just by clicking on it. Press the open button and we'll just change that window to 30 by 30. And let's set the uh, floor to bottom at 6. There's a lot of grid lines in here. Let's change the window type first of all to fixed since a casement window is non-operable in the attic space. It's decorative. And then on the lights, we'll come down to the lights and we'll just set that 2 by 2. So you can see the preview of it. I'm just going to pull that over here and then I'm going to use the multiple copy tool lower left hand section of the screen. If I click it again then I can specify the interval and I've entered in 34 inches. So now as I drag that out it's going to copy those every 34 inches. If I hold my shift key down I'll select all of them, use the center tool and center it on the entryway. Now we have that centered. Back into the camera view you can see what it looks like and I think the last step that I'll do is open up the library and I'm going to search for seam for seam roofing materials come down and find the color that I'm after one more here and now I'm just going to apply that on the roof panels that I want to make that application to and I'll just kind of go around and make those changes. So that's the look that we're after. You can see the changes. As we started with the simple gable entryway and then we curved that to create a larger entryway and I can use the material painter and come in here and paint the plank under the entry. And then you saw how we placed the dormer and created it as a shed, reduced the window size. And then obviously you can go in and add your landscaping. So you can see the photo of the final house that was created. It looks pretty similar. Now the last thing I need to do is just place these decorative gables. And the way that I would do that is I would just draw that with a polyline solid, and which I've done and blocked it and added into my library. Let's go back into the program and I'll show you that process. So that decorative decor, I can just come in here, place it. Actually, I can place that in a 3D view. I think I can. And place that. Come around. You can see the way that looks. Now if you go into your elevation view, let's actually go back into our floor plan view and see where you can actually place that. Let's go up into the attic. You'll see that when I placed it in 3D view, it wasn't centered. So we can just come in here and center it. We'll do the same in our attic. Pull that out. And if you go into your elevation camera, it probably would be even easier to center it. And the way that I drew those was just using a polyline solid. If I delete that, I just use a polyline solid. And I came in here roughly and created the dimension that I was after. Let's go ahead and pull that over a little bit. So I just used that process, used the curve and arc tools, and then I came up with this method over here. Actually, I didn't curve those, but that's how I did that process, and then I just added it into my library here. So if I come back over, I can place that in the elevation view as well. I'll just remove that and place that over here in this view. And that's how you can add those uh, little details into your design. So I'm going to move on. We've created all of the details for the curved section and the do dormer. And now I want to use the exact same floor plan and show you how to create a very different looking house.